G'day everyone, and welcome to the 17th Agony Anth, part of my collaboration with the Charles Darwin University Law Student Society. This week I've been asked, why do lecturers hate Wikipedia so much? I remember the first time I ever saw a student cite Wikipedia in an essay. I was tutoring in political science at the Australian National University in 2001, the year Wikipedia began. I was puzzled by the citation because I'd never heard of Wikipedia, so I opened a browser and had a look. Straight away I was concerned. Back in the early days, Wikipedia was really no more than a small group of enthusiasts editing a relatively small number of pages. Most of the editors had no credentials whatsoever. Going on to Wikipedia back then was the academic equivalent of asking your mate down at the pub for his opinion on Donahue and Stevenson. Because in those early days, Wikipedia was so terribly unreliable, it quickly gained a reputation as academic poison. Well, over the last 20 years, Wikipedia has changed quite a bit. Nowadays, there are many Wikipedia contributors who have serious academic credentials, and many of the articles are clearly written by people who know what they're on about. Citation of sources is now required a lot more, and there are warnings when material is undersourced or controversial or biased. It's a far cry from the days of 2001. And yet most academics, including myself, still forbid the use of Wikipedia in essays. Why is this? Is this just a hangover from those early unreliable days or is there more to it? Well, there's a few reasons why academics take the approach they do to Wikipedia and other similar sources. I'm going to give you six. The first is the most important one. Wikipedia is an open source public encyclopedia. This is both its strength and its weakness. It's a strength because Wikipedia now represents the collective wisdom of thousands upon thousands of people freely sharing their knowledge. But it's a weakness because anyone can change any entry at any time. You see, academic writing has maintained its quality for centuries by sticking to two key principles. First, the identity of the author should always be attached to the work. This means you can assess the credentials of the author, but it also means you can look at some of the author's other work. You can look to see how often the author is cited in other papers. You will know immediately whether you're reading an article by an earnest honours graduate who's publishing an excerpt from their honours research project, or an article by an established professor with decades of publication behind her. That in turn allows you to assess the gravity and reliability of the material. You can't do this with Wikipedia. You have no idea who wrote the materials that you're using. The second key principle is double-blind refereeing. When an article goes into a quality academic journal, or when an author writes a quality textbook, the publishers remove all traces of the identity of the author and then give the article or the chapter to another academic, often to three other academics, for comment and criticism. Those comments are then provided to the original author, who never finds out who the critics were. This means none of the criticism is influenced by personal views. It's a quality control method which has stood the test of time for generations, and it doesn't happen in Wikipedia. So the first problem for Wikipedia is that it lacks some of the key quality control measures that you find in proper academic writing. The second issue with Wikipedia is that it is directed to a lay audience. In other words, the idea of Wikipedia, and another one of its strengths, is that even if you know nothing at all about a topic, you can bust open Wikipedia and quickly obtain a basic understanding presented in language which is pitched to the absolute beginner. However, you're a university student. You're expected to be moving through your degree to the point where you can be regarded as having expertise. On graduation day, you might not be an expert compared to a high court judge, but you will be an expert in the law compared to 99% of the people you meet. So you're expected to be developing knowledge well above the standard of Wikipedia. Using Wikipedia is like saying that you only aspire to a narrow pass or a narrow fail, 
because you're not even trying to obtain higher level knowledge. Third, Wikipedia tends to be based on limited source material. It is cool that nowadays Wikipedia insists on references, but usually that reference material is presented in the form of links, which means there's an inevitable tendency to rely on publicly available online reference material. Unfortunately, from an academic perspective, only a comparatively small amount of our material is available to the public. Even with the advent of public sources like Ostley and Worldly, the truth is that most knowledge of the law is still locked away in the LexisNexis database or CCH or Hine Online or Westlaw. And the materials on those sites are much, much less likely to be cited by Wikipedia. Fourth, one of the most important processes of writing an academic essay is that of citation. You cite your sources so that a potential reader can follow those sources. Indeed, this is a crucial research skill in itself. When you find a super helpful article, you follow the footnotes to find other super helpful articles. All of this, however, relies on the basic underlying expectation that when someone else follows your citation, they will see the same thing on their screen that you saw while writing your paper. And of course, with Wikipedia, that's not true. The content of Wikipedia is ambulatory. It changes with every edit. To the casual viewer, just reading the page itself, those edits are invisible. And so there's absolutely no guarantee that if I follow your citation, I'm going to end up looking at the same thing you were looking at which means there's really no point to the citation at all. Fifth, I hate to tell you kids, but the lecturer doesn't set research essays because they want to learn stuff from you. They already know the answer, to the point where they could dash off an HD paper in an hour or so. The purpose of these essays is for you to be able to demonstrate your research skills, your reasoning skills, and your standard of writing. It does not demonstrate research skills for you to access Wikipedia. A 10-year-old child can access Wikipedia. In a research essay, providing your lecturer with some academic sources which are right on point and which show that you've done real research, that will get you on the way to great marks. The only reason that you're writing an assignment is because you want to give the marker reasons to give you marks. Great research does that. Wikipedia does not. Finally, specific to the study of law, the law is contained in its authorities. That means statutes and authoritative cases. The law is way, way too big and too complicated for any individual person to actually know the law. The lawyer's skill is to know a lot of the law, and then to be able to expertly research the rest. You don't demonstrate this fundamental skill by opening Wikipedia. Now, having said all of that, I don't actually hate Wikipedia. I've said in other videos on my channel that Wikipedia is a great place to start your research journey. It's kind of like my two-minute case notes. If you have no idea and you want to quickly wrap your head around the basics, Wikipedia can be a great place to begin but it's just a beginning. Having learned what you can from Wikipedia, you need to do proper research and proper work to show your stuff and obtain the marks you deserve. I hope that's useful for you again. Keep those questions coming and I'll see you again soon.